Cardano was one of the most anticipated projects in the crypto world in 2020. It saw price action from 10 cents all the way to a high of $3.09 in 2021, a 39x move to the upside. However, competition is fierce in the crypto space. Does Cardano have what it takes? In this video, we will shed some light on why Cardano could be the layer one to rule them all. I am Crypto Andy, and it's my pleasure to review the fundamentals surrounding Cardano. I would like to mention that this content is for educational purposes only and is not financial advice. Let's jump right in. Started in 2015, Cardano is a layer one proof of stake blockchain. It was founded by Charles Hodgkinson, formerly of Ethereum, based on peer review academic research. Cardano has an ethos of openness and transparency. All of the research and technical specifications that underpin Cardano are publicly published, as well as all of Cardano's development activity. Cardano's proof of stake protocol is called Ouroboros. Its design was led by Professor Ajito Kiyas of the University of Edinburgh. The core innovation it's bringing is a modular and flexible design that allows for the composition of many protocols to enhance functionality. The way to think about modularity is a layered cake where each layer can be assigned a function. The layering allows for delegation, side chains, checkpoints, and better data structures, among other things. There are three main components that develop Cardano and the Cardano network. The Cardano Foundation, a body standards that oversees and supervises the advancement of Cardano and its ecosystem, and the Cardano Foundation is led by Charles Hodgkinson. The foundation is the legal custodian of the protocol and the owner of the Cardano brand. The foundation's most crucial responsibility is driving platform adoption and supporting the diverse Cardano community. The foundation contributes to perception of blockchain globally and focuses on legal frameworks integration with legacy systems and education, ensuring blockchain technology is accessible and understood by all. Emergo develops, supports, and incubates commercial opportunity for Cardano, the second arm. They are, for the for-profit part of Cardano, Emergo drives adoption through commercial ventures, they have offices in Singapore, Japan, USA, India, Indonesia, and other places. Amargo supports the high impact ideas with the potential to bring positive change across a range of sectors, especially financial services. In India, there is now Amargo Academy. The third arm of Cardano is IOHK. It's the technology and engineering company that builds the Cardano blockchain. IOHK was founded by Cardano by Charles Hodgkinson and Jeremy Wood. IOHK is committed to innovation through delivering the highest standards in software engineering based in rigorous peer-to-peer -peer reviewed science. They are leaders in building distributed computing systems and decentralized technology solutions. One of the factors that sets Cardano apart is its approach to technology. Cardano took years to write. It wrote academic papers and had them challenged. This academic approach has given Cardano a reputation as one of the best thought out and theoretically developed blockchains out there. It gives investors trust in the ideas and innovation that Cardano is building. The investors' financial allocation to Cardano's blockchain has a higher rate of success because of this approach. It's been dubbed by Charles Hodgkinson as the way of the turtle. More time was spent on creating and designing the building blocks of the network and it will result in a stronger system. One of Charles' criticisms of Ethereum, which he was a founding member of, is it's that Vitalik Buterin thinks up ideas and innovations, then tries to build it and see if it works. And if it does not work, he goes around it, which is in contrast to Cardano's methodical approach. Now that we've covered some of the basics, let's talk about Cardano's Tokenomics. ADA is Cardano's utility token. It's used to pay for transactions. It can be stake earning rewards. You can delegate ADA to support new projects and much more. 
The start of the initial coin offering for Cardano began on August 31st, 2015 and ended January 31st, 2017. The price of Cardano at ICO was 0.0024 cents, quite cheap, and the price increased as the funding rounds were carried out. The total supply of Cardano is capped at 45 billion tokens and ADA's allocation is as follows. 57.6% of the total coin supply was made available at ICO, which means that approximately 25.9 billion ADA were in that token sale. 30.9 were allocated as staking rewards. 11.5% was held by the Cardano team. The market cap as of November 30th, 2022 was 11,224,000,000 plus dollars. Now that we have covered some of the tokenomics, let's take a look at the network's development. Cardano's roadmap has developed in five main iterations. Byron, the founding era, Shelly, the decentralization era, Guggen, the smart contract era, Basho, the scaling era, and Voltaire, the governance era. I will briefly summarize some of the accomplishments of each era, all of which are continually being developed and improved upon. The first version of Cardano started in September 2017 at the start of the Byron era. At that point, users were able to buy and sell ADA. It's called ADA for Augusta Ada King, Countess of Loveless, who was an English mathematician for her work in writing algorithms in the 1880s. The Byron era also saw the creation of the Ouroboros Consensus Protocol, the heart of the Cardano network. Also implemented was the Daedalus and desktop wallet for ADA and the Euroi Light wallet. During the Byron era, the Cardano mainnet was also launched. Next came Shelley, the era of decentralization. In this era, nodes moved into the domain of network participants. This led to more decentralization and robustness in the Cardano system. Also, delegation and incentives were introduced. Users stake ADA to participate in the network and delegation takes place when a new project comes along and needs funding. You delegate your ADA into a staking pool and receive an airdrop like Sunday Swap, for example. Afterwards came Guggen, the era of smart contracts. This allowed for the creation of dApps on Cardano's network. Also in the Guggen era came the creation of Plutus, a purpose-built smart contract, developed language, and execution platform based on Haskell. With the implementation of smart contracts came the ability for the network to be a multi cursing ledger. This enables the creation of new cryptocurrencies on Cardano, like Ardana. An important accomplishment was that Guggen empowered the network to develop enterprise level, mission critical, decentralized smart contract applications. Following Guggen came Basho, the era of scaling. The focus is scalability and interoperability of the network. The era is seeing the introduction of sidechains like EVM compatible bridges for Ethereum. In this era also came the Hydra scaling solution, which improved network speed of dApps on Cardano. Hydra is a layer two scaling solution that makes microtransactions much cheaper and efficient on the blockchain. Developers appreciated this speed increase when it was uh, first rolled out, which was earlier in 2022. Last came Voltaire, the era of governance. This introduced a voting and treasury system where users could stake and vote to influence the future developments of the network. Voltaire presents the opportunity for network participants to introduce improvement proposals, also a part of this era is the creation of a treasury system where a fraction of all transaction fees will be pooled to provide funds for development activities. On this front, on November 7th, 2022, there was a Cardano summit where you can vote for nominees that have contributed to the network. You can vote using your ADA by connecting your wallet on categories such as marketplace, developer, NFT projects, since these nominees are the best of the network, it's a good way to familiarize yourself with the ecosystem. And I encourage you to check it out by going to voting.summit. The link will be provided in the description below. The era of developments, which we talked about, were not piecemeal and happened in parallel. There is continuing improvement happening all the time. And you can go to 
essential Cardano updates for development updates and recent articles. There is a plethora of information available there for you to geek out on. So who is spearheading this project? You may be wondering at this point. Cardano was founded by Charles Hodgkinson. He's an American entrepreneur who founded Input Output Global, formerly IOHK, and the Cardano blockchain. Hodgkinson attended Metropolitan State University of Denver to study analytical numbers theory, so he's a math guy. Charles first got involved with cryptocurrency uh, with a project called the Bitcoin Education Project. Later, Charles joined the Ethereum team as one of the original founders with Vitalik Buterin in the late 2013. Buterin and the Ethereum team removed Hodgkinson in 2014 after disputes about the direction Ethereum should take. In late 2014, Charles and Jeremy Woods founded IOHK, an engineering company that builds blockchain. Charles was born on November 5th, 1987 in Hawaii. If you want more information on Charles, he is very active on YouTube and frequently gives his opinion on a variety of subjects. Simply search for Charles Hodgkinson and you will see his videos. Some of the latest development on Cardano ecosystem are as follows. There was an ISPO launch on November 21st, 2022 for Climate Neutral Cardano. CNC is an alliance of Cardano stake pool committed to using 100% renewable energy for the operation of Cardano stake pool server. You stake Cardano will be used to plant trees with a goal of 1 million trees for the dubbed Cardano forest. Most of the recent news has revolved around the Cardano summit, which I already talked about. So I thought that I would mention some of the projects I think you should keep your eyes on. First of which is the World Mobile Token, which I am a big fan of. The WMT is a digital token created to connect the unconnected and bank the unbanked. With nearly 4 billion people left online, digital exclusion is a significant problem. World Mobile will deliver a revolutionary, scalable network in Africa and beyond. There will be blimps to cast network signals across wide areas. You can get an Earth node and earn WMT by doing so. The inroads into Africa are noteworthy because they are part of Cardano's overall strategy to quote Charles Hoskinson here. If you can get infrastructure built in Africa and it deploys successfully, you have a, a social building block that you can then bring to the West. World Mobile Token, if successful, could have really great price action in the next crypto bull run. So keep an eye on that project. Another project that has gotten a lot of attention is Ardana. Ardana is a decentralized stablecoin hub which can help bring the necessary liquidity to maintain a strong Cardano economy. Ardana is fully decentralized. It can be used to borrow stable coins against locked collateral. DUSD is the stablecoin being developed by Ardana and which is intended to work with DanaSwap or Cardano Dex. And Pawa is another project and it's the first real FI property platform on Cardano that has a mission to provide affordable housing and banking services to those without those services in Africa. EMP is the Empower Utility Token that allows individuals to participate in sustainable projects. They sell NFTs to raise funds and they are trying to solve very real problems. Cryptocurrency that works, that is called RealFi when it does things like property. If Empower tokens are used to pay for housing, their value will be sustainable in a way very few other cryptocurrencies dream of, if successful. Also, I would like to mention Pavia, a very interesting metaverse project. The project is owned by Pasia Corp, a legal entity in Seekles. The main aspect of Pavia is land. Pavia has 100,000 land parcels which were sold as NFTs. The parcels have coordinates that indicate the position on the Pavia map. Pavia users make a model and create virtual stores, uh, 2000 stores apparently at the moment. Also interesting is that Pavia plans to build interoperability between metaverses like Decentraland and Sandbox. If you have made it to the end, I want to thank you for your time and support. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Our videos come out weekly and you won't want to miss what comes next. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye, my friends.